So here's the challenge. We've got to get the entire U.S. economy, the entire world actually, to net zero emissions of greenhouse gases, ASAP. 2050 is the deadline President Biden set out for the U.S., and it's a good one. Net zero is the point where human-caused emissions of climate warming gases like carbon dioxide are low enough to be exactly equaled out by human-caused removal and permanent storage of those same gases. That'll be the day when we stop digging a deeper hole, when we stop contributing to the warming and destabilization of the Earth's climate and everything that depends on it. So how do we get it done? If we take a look at U.S. demand for final energy carriers like fuels and electricity, we can start to size up the challenge. About one-third of U.S. demand is met by zero-carbon energy carriers like electricity, steam, and hydrogen. Those carriers don't contain or emit any CO2 themselves when consumed, so swap out clean electricity sources for fossil fuels to produce these energy carriers, and we're good. Easy enough. The problem is that the other two-thirds of demand is for liquid and gaseous hydrocarbons, fossil fuels like gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, and natural gas as well as the petrochemical feedstocks that make everything from plastics to pharmaceuticals to fertilizers. And those ones are trickier. Our options here are to capture the CO2 emitted when we use these fuels, produce carbon neutral substitutes like some biofuels, or try to offset the resulting emissions by removing and storing CO2 from the atmosphere. While each of those options work, they're a lot more costly than producing carbon-free electricity, and each has their own limits. It's just too big a lift to tackle the full scale of our hydrocarbon demand with these solutions. We simply have to knock down the size of our demand for hydrocarbon fuels, and that's where clean electricity does double duty. Clean electricity is the linchpin in a net zero emissions economy. The electricity sector needs to cut its emissions faster and deeper than any other sector, while simultaneously expanding its role in the economy. In Princeton's Net Zero America study, my colleagues and I outlined multiple paths to reach net zero emissions in the U.S. by mid-century. They all envision more than doubling total electricity production by 2050, with much greater shares of vehicles, buildings, and industrial processes all running directly on electricity or fueled by carbon-free or carbon-neutral energy carriers like hydrogen or synthetic fuels produced from clean electricity. The pace and scale of this challenge are truly epic. Today, we produce about 4,000 terawatt hours of electricity in the U.S. 40% of that is carbon-free, about half of that from old nuclear power stations, and the remainder from wind, hydropower, solar, and other renewable energy sources. Over the next decade, we need to rapidly phase out coal-fired power plants, a cheap and easy way to quickly slash carbon emissions and save thousands of lives from pollution-related deaths. We also need to more gradually draw down our use of natural gas for electricity production. We should also expect some of our aging nuclear power plants to retire between now and 2050. Although, any plants that can be safely operated ought to continue producing emissions-free power as a foundation that we can build on to more rapidly cut emissions. That still leaves a growing gap between the declining contributions from existing power plants and the rapidly growing demand for electricity to fuel our EVs and heat pumps or produce clean hydrogen. To fill that gap, we need to more than double all current carbon-free generation by 2030. We'd also need to build as much new clean energy as all electricity generation in the United States today by no later than 2040, then nearly doubling that again by 2050. In other words, it took us about 140 years from the days of Edison, Tesla, and Westinghouse to build today's modern grid. Now, we have to build that much new clean electricity and associated power lines again twice over the next 30 years. Staying on this path will require smashing new record rates of construction for clean electricity sources, especially wind and solar power, each and every year. The good news, this is remarkably affordable. The Net Zero America study estimates that we can make the transition to net zero emissions while spending less as a share of our economy's gross domestic product on energy services than we have during recent prosperous periods of American history, and far less than during energy crises, past or present. The main reason is that the costs have plummeted over the last decade for wind and solar power, as well as lithium ion batteries, the principal cost component of electric vehicles and our best option today for grid-connected energy storage. 
since 2010, costs for solar power and battery packs have fallen by about 90% and costs for wind power by more than two thirds. Proactive public policies and voluntary procurement by corporations and individuals fueled deployment of these once costly alternative energy sources and drove steady cost reductions through learning by doing, economies of scale, and incremental innovation that turned them into the cheapest sources of electricity available today. But while wind and solar and batteries will be stars of our clean energy team, we can't win with these technologies alone. Trying to decarbonize with weather-dependent renewables and storage alone is a little bit like trying to win the NCAA tournament with a team consisting solely of point guards. You might be able to move the ball effectively down the court, but you're going to lose eventually to a team that fields the full complement of players, each playing their ideal role on the team. Our challenge now is to complete the clean electricity team. There are three key positions that all need to be filled. First, Weather-dependent technologies like wind and solar power act as fuel-saving resources. They're free when we've got them, and we can use those resources to displace fuel-burning resources like natural gas, saving money and emissions. Unfortunately, these technologies are also reliably unreliable. We shouldn't count on them to be there exactly when we need them. We can complement weather-dependent renewables with fast-burst balancing resources like batteries, demand response, and flexible demand scheduling. These are our sprinters, well-suited to quick but short bursts of power and flexibility, filling in the gaps between supply and demand on hourly or daily cycles. Rounding out the team are firm resources. Firm resources are technologies available any time of the year for as long as we need them. We can count on them to step in when the wind or solar are unavailable and the batteries run out of juice. Today, we rely on polluting coal and natural gas plants, as well as our aging nuclear fleet for this critical job. But that has to change. We need new, clean, firm options like advanced nuclear power or geothermal, natural gas or biomass plants that capture and safely store their emissions, or power plants burning hydrogen, biomethane, or some other net zero carbon fuel. Super cheap, long duration energy storage may even help here too. Our choices in this space though are all less mature, more costly or higher risk than wind, solar or batteries are today. But we're gonna need them nonetheless, especially in the 2030s and 2040s as we have to transition away from natural gas power plants. Our challenge is thus to repeat the success we've seen with wind and solar and batteries over the recent years. Public policy and corporate leaders can work hand in hand to accelerate the deployment of a portfolio of advanced clean firm resources over the next decade. Government funding for demonstration projects, subsidies, auctions, or policy mandates that create early niche markets, and voluntary procurement by corporations, institutions, and government agencies can help prove these technologies out, drive down their costs, and build mature supply chains that will ensure we have a full suite of clean firm options ready to step up when we need them and to complete the clean electricity team. The road to net zero emissions is in sight. It's time to complete the journey.